All right, we're back again. It's another week of Different Kind of Genius. I'm your host, Andre Kufo. Big shout out to Griffin Burger for holding us down as always. Go eat their food. You know what to do. Today with me though, it's always a special guest. This is a guy that I've known for pretty much the start and he's helped shape a lot of the directions for all the episodes that, we're about, that we've been doing. And I don't know a better way to introduce him. So here's James Quinlan, aka Q's Shoes, aka Q. What's going on, bro? How you going, bro? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good as always. Man, thank you so much for pulling up. No, like, thank you, bro. Like, I know you finished a hard day of work, so I'm glad you can get Another here. Another day, bro. Another thing. day. Another day? Exactly, yeah. Fuck. Let's get straight into it, because I know what you do, but tell the people, what does Q's Shoes do? Pretty much customized shoes, clean shoes, um, looking to restore shoes, pretty much everything to do with shoes, bro. Like, everything. So... I don't know, if you got a pair of shoes, hit me up. True. Man, you like, you really undersold yourself there. You do real well. Like, the, like people think when they want to customise shoes that they just go on Nike and do the customization that way. Going through you, <laughs> it's so much better and you have so much more control. Yeah. The stuff off Nike, you only get, it's limited. You can only do so much on there. Mm. Whereas the, like, the paint brand that I use, Angelus, like you can do anything pretty much. You Literally. can choose any color. Literally. You go from there. You can do anything. You can do anything to a pair of shoes. Anything. Break that down because you say that, but people don't even know that you can do stuff to shoes. You, you can literally paint any part of a shoe. You can paint the sole. You can paint the midsole. You can paint toe box, swoosh, whatever. Any, anything. Anything any and everything. Yeah. Snap, snap. Well... I guess you've got some there. You might as well show us what you do. Because I've been waiting forever to see them. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm just going to give them to you. All right. All right. All right. Bro. Look at Cody's face. Everyone's sitting here and they're just like, fuck. Fuck. Penny Ray stickers. Y'all know what to do. We're going to get into that as well. Fuck. No, just put that stuff aside. Put all this good. stuff to yeah. the side. Fuck. Fuck. What? Fuck. 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 True? True? <laughs> True? How'd you fucking do that? Uh... <clears throat> Lace face. But. Thank you, my brother. Thank yeah. you. I'm yeah. not wasting no time. I'm all slide stage just so I can put this shit on. I'm going to show the fucking camera. Look at that shit. That's fucking sick. All the way around. Fucking no. Fucking no. Bro, so break it, break it down. How'd you do, like, how did you do this? How did you manage to do this and fuck the grey is clean? Oh, that. Oh, when we when you come to my place when we talked about it, that. You honestly, you were the one that come up with that on the side. True. And I just brought it to life. <laughs> you know, like you really. I was did. lucky that I had just. Quickly, I've got those shorter, but I can get longer ones too. No, don't stress. If anything, I prefer them shorter. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, I had a dude. I know a dude. Uh, just for kicks. He's another customizer based in Brisbane. Yep. Um, he has a stencil machine, so he was able to do the stencils for me. And the stencils, um, that's the... Oh, with the that's stencils, the, that's the deco yeah. on the slide? Yeah. Okay. So all he did was print that out for me and I just... Pretty much painted it on. Put it. Uh, ha ended up having to get them separated, so the DK and the OG separated. Well, so they um, weren't as one complete thing. Yeah, so I could fit them to wherever, and yeah, and then just the gold. Bro, I'm fucking eight. truly impressed. Look at Cody's face. Cody's just sitting here, and he's just like, "Damn, damn." Yeah, they come out fucking clean. They like, did come out clean. Mm. I'm happy we didn't go with the grey. Yeah, me too. Bro, that's, so that's one of the best things about Q's shoes. You go back and forth with him. 
So he literally like you present him an idea and he will unpack it. And because the man's a fucking wizard at what he does, look at what he creates. Absolute dopeness. Absolute fucking dopeness. This is why you go through Q shoes to get your shoes done. That's a big shoe. Man, so take break it down. How long does the process take? Uh, from start to finish with what with like talking to the customer or whatever. Just, like break it down for people that don't know. Talking to the customer with an idea, maybe, I don't know, a couple of days. You've got to figure out what exactly what they want. Because someone will, for example, like I've had people come to me and they just get an image off like Instagram or Google or whatever. Like they just type in, I don't know, if they type in custom shoe or custom like Air Force One, for example. And they like half the stuff on Google is just Photoshopped. Mm. Like, and I don't think people realize that as well. No one realizes that. And they just think that that's something you can do. But half the time you can't. And so you got to, you just got to be realistic with them. And how, like I've got, I've got multiple messages of people asking me to do stuff that I can't do, like physically can't do. What is an example of something you physically can't do? People ask for, like I get a lot of Air Force Ones, a lot of Air Force Ones. Yep. So people ask for like the midsole with all these patterns all over it and like it's it's not impossible but for the price that they want, it is. Interesting. Because like for example, people don't people don't understand how like cheap you can do customs. For example, like if you were to – anyone can do one. Mm-hmm. Anyone can do a customer. It's just whether you – pretty much whether you have the balls or not to do it. Okay. Um, so, so how you, would you start? Oh, the way I started was I was – I just what like shoes. I've always liked shoes, always liked shoes. Mm-hmm. Found off YouTube, Instagram – after f- like following more and more shoe pages, more and more customizers. And I was like, it's pretty cool. Mm. So I ended up finding, I, I didn't know of anyone in Australia. I didn't follow any customizers in Australia. It was only America. So I hit up this dude and I don't know if you've seen the, um, the Gatorade customs that I've done. I have. And there's going to be a picture of him right here as well. Mm. Um, so I hit up this dude in America, Meek Shoes, who is like, he's the king of the Gatorade customs. I hit him up and said, look, I want these done. I'd, I just bought a pair of the orange ones. And the, I, the only reason I bought them was for that. To make the Gatorade yeah. style shoes? Yeah. My, my whole purpose of buying them was to send them to him. Oh, why do you want to do that? Because I didn't know anyone else to send them to. True. And I didn't like. I didn't think that I would wear the orange, the complete orange shoe by itself. So I hit him up, and said, "Look, this is what I want to do. I'm from Australia. How can we get it to happen?" Mm. He pretty much said, "Look, I'm not gonna fuck you around. Like, it's gonna cost you too much to get the shipping shoe wise. To shipping wise, yeah, is gonna cost you too much, and you're better off trying to find someone in Australia." He knew of a dude. Never message back, nothing. So I was like, all right, well, what can I do? I started looking into doing it myself and I was like, nah, I can't do it myself. D- didn't have the confidence to do it myself. So I looked around, asked around, ended up finding this guy from Sydney who's also now helped me out a lot. Um, and he did them for me, but I got him back and I wasn't happy with him. So he was the first one to attempt the Gatorade customs on those orange shoes? In Australia. Yeah, for you. For me. Yeah. But as far as I knew anyway. Yeah. At that time, as far as I knew. And yeah, I got them back and I was like, oh, I don't They're good. Wore them once and they started cracking and I was like, oh, what, what do I do? I reckon. I, mess, I wore them like, I think I wore them to Cody's house. And 
yeah, wore them. Didn't even, wasn't that much wear and got home and they were all cracked and all the inside, like, because he paints all the sock liner and everything. It all worn off. You could pretty much see the orange and I was like, fuck, I can do this myself, surely. So I looked into it a bit more, asked a few questions, but like asked him a few questions and said, look, I'll, rather than send them back to you, I'm going to touch them up myself. True. Was he offended by that? Or he was just like, go for it. No, nah, he, oh, he didn't talk to me for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, but yeah, he ended up like, I, I ended up sourcing my own paint. Um, and yeah, I just went from there pretty much. And I honestly didn't touch those pair of shoes. I ended up buying another pair. Another pair of Jordan Jordan ones, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm just gonna try on these first. Should have bought a pair from Kmart or something." Oh, but, I see. You practice on a shitty shoe before you yeah, go and spend 150 dollars on a pair, bro. They were like 250. Fuck. Mm. But they came out clean, and I still like when I. So that was pretty much the very first shoe I did, and I still kind of like tinker around with them and fix stuff up that I'd missed. And same with these. Like I've I've got multiple things on these that I could fix right now. But I just don't have the time. True. Yeah, I've seen like the orders at your house. You've got a few pairs of shoes that a few people want done. Yeah, I, I, there's they just keep coming. But, but I don't have the time like with day job everything. Pretty much it's just I get a couple hours I try and do five or six hours during the weekdays. Saturday, if I don't work, I'll work all day Saturday on shoes and Sunday is my day off. So let the people know what else you do for work. I'm a landscaper. So you, like, you somehow managed to find the time to work full-time <laughs> as a landscaper yeah. and do custom shoes after it. Yep. Fuck. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not easy. But I'm still managing to get, managing to get stuff done, so... Man, and then the quality you're putting out, it's top quality as well. It's not like yeah. you're rushing and it either. That, that's kind of, that's what I'm all about is quality rather than quantity. Mm. Like I've got, I do have a lot of shoes, but I, every time someone messages and sends a pair, I say, look, like these possibly might get, might not get done for a month. Yeah. Which isn't a bad turnaround too. It's not, but... It's shoe people like they're yeah, a different. Breed, I've been bro. waiting for these for yeah, yeah, so long. Uh, no, no, like not in a negative way. Yeah, but we that, just that's made sure we were going like to do it. A few months or a couple of months. Yeah, but then there was there was a lot that you had to work out as well. Like for me, my shoe size is a bit bigger, so mm. the normal size stenciling, like yeah. you had an issue. Yeah, with. yeah, I did. And then uh, not only that, we scripted it so this would be the first time I'd see him. So we had to yeah, like shuffle off yeah. our schedules to make yeah. sure we both worked. Yeah, but they. <laughs> They come out good, so man, they've come out. And I've clean. showed, I've showed, you're not the first person to see them, bro. That's like, what pissed me off yeah. the most. There were so many people that were like, "Oh, your shoes are hard." Yeah. I'm like, "Really? I wouldn't know." Mm. I'm like, no, "I want to know, but I don't want to know." Yeah. So break down how you keep the quality so good, because before you said how when you wore them once it just scratched off. What do you do to prevent all that? Uh, there's ve- there's different brands of like a finisher you can use. And what's finisher? Um, so it's like it's what you spray. Oh. You can either you can paint paint it on. It's like it's just a clear finish. Okay. So it's like if you paint a table or paint whatever and you put a clear varnish over the top. It's pretty much that. Um but this stuff that I use, it's uh called LK it's liquid kicks. Yeah. Um it's scratch proof everything, like scratch proof, waterproof. Um and that's why like when I did I don't know if the Gatorades again yep. didn't for Kip. Yeah, no, like. No. Um, so when I did those, I knew that he was going to like put them through hell. Just for reference, Kip's a break dancer. Yeah. So that was my reason behind giving him those. Um, that was for me to test out that product. And they held up, like, they got like maybe a couple scratches here and there. And, and that was with before- a full midsole paint, everything. I know you've got the before and after, so make sure you send them through to me. Yeah, I will. But did you learn that the hard way? So you'd send out a pair of shoes, people would put them, like people would wear them and then it'd scratch off easily? Like what made mm. you think about doing that? I thought about it beforehand because I'd had that, like I'd had that experience of not having, like I got a customizer to do a pair of shoes and for me it wasn't good enough. 
Mm. And one like one wear is not good enough. Yeah, it's not sustainable. But in saying that, he's he's improved like his his work and like the quality of his work's gone from here to fuck like he's doing good. He's really stepped yeah. up. But then like man, you both have. I remember sitting there at yours. Like you weren't the earliest into it, but you're just sort of more or less establishing yourself. Mm. And the work that you've been able to put out since then, like, fuck, the same thing can be said about you, bro. Yeah. And that's what, uh, that's where the stuff with the stencils and stuff, like the, the white air forces I put out for, I did the, I did them for a guy in Sydney. Oh, the Xavier ones. Yeah. Yeah. Did them for a guy in Sydney who was coming down to Melbourne. Like I had those for six months. Did them. But he was coming, like, yeah, like I said, he was coming down to Melbourne and wanted to receive them personally. Yeah. Met up with him last weekend and he was, like, just blown away. And that's the beauty of stencils. It just, uh, you don't have to freehand anything. Oh, oh, okay. So you didn't actually have to write the DKOG? No. I put the stencil on, like, it. It covers like that area of the shoe. So the fuck if people can see it, keep explaining it. And then I just sprayed over like, I obviously taped up like, taped, taped up the tick, taped up like all around this area. Um, Just sprayed it on and peeled the stencil off and that's what it comes out like. Snap. Which makes sense because it'd be so hard, like you'd have to have a very delicate hand to be trying to draw on shoes. Yeah. No, oh, I... You can't. There's there's various different ways you can do it. There's like various methods, but uh, not that I've explored yet. Mm. But I do know, how, like I know, the like the technique to do it. Just haven't done it yet. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, you'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah, that's one of those things. The more you do, the more. And I do a lot of pairs for myself just to test stuff out on. Mm. And yeah, it just makes kind of makes it harder because you have to pay that money to buy a pair of shoes yourself. I get you, rather than someone providing the shoes. Yeah. Whereas I, I don't know, a lot of people buy like cheap cheap shoes from like Kmart or somewhere, but I'm not going to wear them. Yeah. I'd rather paint on a pair of shoes that I could wear. So, and then like, and then the fabric and stuff's different. So it's like you can practice on the Kmart yeah. shoes, but then will it really be the same? Exactly. But... A lot, the the thing with the Kmart shoes, they're mostly like most of the shoes that people work on are leather, mm. and most leathers are the same. Okay, that's handy for you. Yeah, but it's just a matter of one finding them because if they go, they're gone like that. True. People love Kmart. Yeah, they, yeah, they really do, don't they? Well, it's it's a cheaper alternative, yeah, so exactly. it makes complete sense. Exactly, but yeah, it's just. It's a matter of doing it. Mm. And the more you do it, the more same with anything. The more you practice on things, the better you get. Hundred percent. Oh Liam, do you want to run upstairs and tell them to shut the fuck up? Yeah. Cheers, bro. Um. So wait, break is So when you say you go and get your own paint, like what sort of is it? Just the normal paint that you can just find? Uh, it's just acrylic. Like it's acrylic paint. Acrylic paint. But the brand that I use is Angelus. Angelus. Yeah. And why are they the top tier? They're the top customizer paint. Like that's what everyone uses. Yeah. And you can you can find it here, but it's gonna cost you more. Also, you have to get imported. Yeah. So I I've I only found out recently that it's actually cheaper for you to buy in bulk off of their website, like, and get it sent here than okay. buying from. I I found that out the hard way. Oh, true. And how much does a bottle of paint cost for a pair of shoes, roughly? Here, for a 29 mil bottle, so like, I don't know, that is 12 bucks, I think. And how like how many pairs of shoes could you paint, roughly, with a 29 mil bottle? Oh, um, a heap. True. Oh, because you, like, you don't paint the whole shoe, you only paint like... Yeah, because you're only doing it. bits and pieces of it. If you were to paint a whole shoe... Like, 
the one color, you'd probably get, I don't know, maybe four pairs. Oh, that's still uh, not too bad. Yeah, it's still, it's still good. Like, because you're not painting, you're not doing it overly thick. The thicker you do the paint, the more likely it is to crack. True. So you want to do thin layers, layers, thin layers. Okay. So, okay, okay. And what about the little, how, so how do you get the little custom things done? Like through the shoelace? That's f- through a company called Lace Space. Lace Space? Yeah. They're f- from Melbourne. They pretty much do anything to do with laces. And that's where I got those laces from too. They're the wax gold tip laces. Yeah. And I remember, like, I remember when I had that, like a friend randomly told me about them. Like when I like showed him the shoes, I was like, oh, I'm getting these custom made. Mm. He's like, get gold tips. And I was just like, all right, <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. ask. Because I knew, I, I, when I looked, they didn't have like the normal, like whatever material laces are made out of yeah. with a gold tip. And on their website, those wax laces are like shiny. They're like, like leather shiny. True. And I was like, nah, I don't like them. And I was nearly just going to like dip, <laughs> dip the end of the laces in gold. And I was like, nah, that's not good enough. So I, just, I ended up buying them and they came out a lot better than I thought. Mate, quality control gear, mm-hmm. you're all about it. And like the quality of these have come out fucking 10 out of 10. And it's just, a, I think it's a dope feeling as well, knowing that you've got a pair of shoes that I won't see another pair. Exactly. Exactly. But that's like, that's like, there's so much. There's so many positive things about what you do because you're creating individuals. Mm. Like you're interpreting an individual's idea and then you're able to turn that idea and actually put it onto a shoe. Like, fuck. Like, yeah. bro, I, I remember the minute I found out that you could do them, I was just like, it was Kip actually. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. So Kip, the one we are talking about before, who does the break dance and he rocked up in those Gatorades to the barbershop and they were just the loudest thing I've ever seen. Like, that was the first thing you saw, especially as a sneakerhead. Like, yeah. I looked straight at his feet and I was just yeah. like, where did you get them? Mm. And he's like, James Quinlan, rah, 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 rah. And then that day I just fucking shot you a message. I was just like, how do I get a pair of these? Yeah. They're, that's the that's thing with the Gatorades. That's why I like doing them so much because they're such a loud out there pair that as soon as you customize them, people's eyes are drawn to them. Oh, 100 and the, oh, the orange and the light blue, like, mm. I think they're just distinctive colors as well, so they will yeah. grab the, your eye. Yeah, well, they got orange, blue, yellow, and purple. I want to see some purple ones. That'd be sick. I've done them. True? Mm. Wait, so you said Air Force is your specialty, but what other shoes do you customize? Um, <clears throat> Anything really. Like, like, I've done a few pairs of Vans. Uh, a few pairs of Converse, Air Force Jordan ones, a couple of pairs of slides. Pretty much, you can pretty much do anything if you got a pair of shoes. Like I said, Just, and as long as they're a clean pair of shoes. Yeah, not they don't have to be completely clean, but clean enough. I can always clean them. That's the thing. True. And that's like when I did um, Nas. Yep. When I did his Vans. They were fucked like they would. Oh, I was in the streets, barber. Yeah. What did like? What do you mean? Were they just they, dirty shoes? They they weren't super dirty, but they're not ideal to work on. Okay. And so what's I, the process like when you clean them? Uh so I pretty much I I've got like a cleaning product, I just hot water, a bit of soap, a bit of scrubbing, a bit of elbow grease. True. So it's like you really have to put in the hard work. Yeah, that's not super hard, but. It's more, it's time consuming for people to do. Like I've, yeah, it's, people aren't going to go out of their way to clean their shoes unless you really, really like your shoes. Unless you're a sneakerhead. Yeah. I've had my white sole a few times, got the toothbrush out and I've sat there and I've just been yeah, like. You scrub the shit out. I'm going out tonight yeah. and I'm going to go to a club and dirty yeah. them again. And then but at least clean they're clean. them tomorrow, yeah. Fuck. No, so that, I guess that's really quite, like, that's really quite the talent. The, the fact that you can restore clean and recreate a shoe like 
That's fucking special, bro. Mm. And like that's a niche where it's oversaturated in America, but for yeah. you, you're the only yeah. one, at least that I know of, yeah. in Geelong doing it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much why I wanted to start because I found it so hard to find someone else to customize me a pair. No one know like at that time I didn't know anyone in Australia, yeah. no one that customized shoes. But in America, I knew of twenty people. True, and I'm not from there. You know what I mean? Like, mm, it's like that says a lot. It's like, how can you not find anyone local when mm. that's all you've been looking for? Yeah. Well, then, perfect opportunity for you though. Like, that's a gap in the market. So you're just like, sweet, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it. Exactly. Like, bro, like it's sick. And I'm just thank you once again, bro. Because I'm good. like, fuck, these are proper. These are proper. So tell us about what else you do. Because I know you get up to a few things other than just shoes and being a landscaper. Uh, so we also, or well, I also am part of a, or we're in the process of making clothes, a penny race. Um, we started out making, well, it was my partner, Alex, and her best friend, my best friend, like everyone's best friend, Jesse. Um, they th- both work together. I uh, thought of this idea of making clothing. Alex and I were, my, Alex is Filipino. Yep. So we were just about to go to the Philippines and we thought, fuck, why can't we um, get stuff made over there? Um, and their whole idea was to be able to help another country or not not necessarily a country but other people in another country to be able to sustain and make some sort of money off what we're trying to do as well rather than just giving money to who like to some company in China or whatever yeah you'd rather like so you took the initiative to go there and actually like find a local mm. and then create the relationship and then that's what's sending the clothes back and forth? Yeah. Oh, well, we were, we were actually lucky that So the first time Alex and I went over in 2015, we got told about these basketball shorts that this guy makes basketball shorts for like all the local teams and stuff, mm-hmm. basketball singlets, everything. So I was, <coughs> we, just, we just thought why not try and get him to make some street, street wear? Just see what he says. Went in there and it was, yeah, it was a bit of back and forth, but we were lucky that we were there or else we would have been like nothing would have ever come of it. What do you mean by nothing would have ever come of it? Because uh, the communicate, like the language barrier is, yeah. yeah, it's just, it was too hard to kind of deal with. We were just lucky that all Alex's family's over there and we could get, them to kind of interpretate what yeah that, that'd be yeah. your translator yeah so how were they like so how was that originally going to look did you ask him for basketball shorts and he literally just was like he just gave us a pair of basketball shorts like no pockets a couple stripes here and there no embroidery nothing we were just like these are cool but this is not what i want mm. so then we told him like we want pockets we want this we want various bits and pieces and he's like, I don't do that. Like, you can't play basketball with pockets. And we're like, we know. <laughs> but this it's is not what we want. For, like, this isn't for playing basketball. Mm. And he's like, what's it for? True. And like streetwear. And he's like, oh, I don't really do that kind of stuff. And we were like, well, can you? Or else we'll go elsewhere. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. And we got him and... Everyone loves them. Man, and like, I do. That's another thing we'll edit in as well. But they've got these dope basketball shorts. They look clean as well. All your colorways are fucking mm. 10 out of 10. But the pockets on them are deep. Yeah. Like they're That's big enough for wants. like the new iPhones and yeah. it's just... And then for me, I wear basketball shorts to the gym. Mm. And then the biggest problem I have is not having fucking pockets to put my shit in. Yeah. I mean, I got a pair of yours. <laughs> I was just like, my life got even easier. Yeah. Yeah, they and that that like that was something that they 
kind of did themselves. What do you we mean? Told, we told him that we wanted pockets. Yeah. Didn't say the length or whatever. And <laughs> the, that pair, came, like, because we got three samples while we were there. Like the day, I, pretty, I think we went in that day, came back the next day and he'd already made them or the day up, a couple of days after. And I put my hand, like that's the first thing I did was put my hands in the pockets and I was like, these are deep pockets. And I wore them pretty much the rest of the holiday. True. Mm. So what did the other two pairs like look like? Were they all like how they gave you three prototypes? Do they all sort of? Oh no, they were just a different colorways kind of thing. But were you happy with them all? Like you didn't yeah. have to switch about? No, nothing really. There was other oh, embroidery and stuff we had to kind of switch up, but that was neither here nor there. Yeah, but you were lucky that you had the ability to actually communicate that while you were still there. Yeah, because you would have been spewing if yeah. you just got back to Australia. Yeah, paid for the ship and to have like all these clothes shipped over. Next minute, like they just look like shit. Exactly, and that but that's a risk people take with making clothes too. Mm. Is unless you're willing to buy, like pay for samples, then that's the risk you take. So, would you recommend paying for samples? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Which only makes sense. You want to make sure of what you're getting before <laughs> you order would, like a hundred. Why would you want to buy a bulk mm. amount of clothes? And get all of them and they're no good. You've just spent thousands of dollars on something that you can't sell. Not, you're stuck with it then. Mm. It's just stuck and it'll just collect dust. It's not worth it. Pay yeah. the extra dollars. So is this relationship ongoing? Is that the guy who's doing the T-shirts and stuff as well? Nah, so we got... Oh, well, at these T-shirts were... M- like the embroidery was done by done by the guy who makes the shorts, his brother. True. Mm. And how did that come about? He just said, like, we were like, we want embroidery. Can you do it? And he's like, no, I can't, but my brother can. So the guy's name is, the guy who makes the shorts, his name is Jun, June, and his brother is July. True. Mm. I don't know if that's their birth date, so I don't know. But you're like, thank you. This yeah. is exactly what I yeah. needed. Like the, and we just like drove from, I like got a tricycle from like here to like down the street, like 10 minutes. Just dropped him off. And was that and an easy thing to communicate what you wanted to him? Uh, the first ones weren't because we actually had trouble with the, because uh, when, because we were in such a rush to like, well, Alex and Jesse were in such a rush to, get everything done and me and Alex were in the rush to get everything packed and ready and whatever. Oh, because you're only there for a short amount of time. No, we were there for a while, but it was just like a kind of last minute thing before Alex and I left. Okay. Um, We didn't actually pack a USB with the logo on it. Oh, no. Mm. So what did you do? Uh, We were lucky enough that Alex had a photo on her phone and we had to go to <laughs> to a um, computer shop, like zoom right in. Alex traced it out off her phone, got the tracing, like Photoshop or like scanned it, got it on a computer, blacked it out, and we went from there. <laughs> like it was just a fuck around. He's got lucky. Yeah. It took like, that was like a whole day. And um, when you've got numbered days, and it's like so it's just like thirty five degrees. Yeah. Yeah, in the Philippines, the mosquitoes are not friendly. Mm. No, well, that wasn't a good day. But we're here, so That's it, that's it. So when so when's like when are you dropping all of that? All the shorts, all the t shirts, they're pretty much gone now. Um that was dropped. I don't know. It's just it, it's pretty much just a work in progress. We're yeah. dropping when we can, when shit falls in line for us too. Mm. Um, we've got hoodies coming out. They should be here next week. And I know it's a shit time. Like you, no one really wear, oh, you're wearing a hoodie, but no one wears, like this time of year, no one particularly wears hoodies. Mm. But it's just the way shit worked for us. 
Yeah, like you didn't have much of a choice. There was a lot of shit that happened and yeah, just money wise and um communication as well. Oh what so what other problems did you run into? So for these we actually went through a Chinese company, which is again is what I don't like doing. What made you go through the Chinese company rather than the other ones? Or the Filipino comp like the Filipino boys? Oh, it was easier. Interesting. Easier Why? than trying to find because so all the t shirts that we got, they're all Asian sizes. So I think this t shirt I've got on is like a seven XL. True. Yeah, the two XLs are like really large. And like they're small. I reckon the two XL is like a small True. Like, yeah. It's that like bad. Yeah. So rather than risking it and trying to find a hoodie while we're not there. Um, yeah, it was just easier for us to go through this other company where we knew we could um, create our own sizes and go from that. But as it turned out, it wasn't as easy as we thought, so it's not going to happen <laughs> through them again. True. What? Like what? So what? Like what happened? Uh, we just had a lot of size complications. Like, cause like I said, we got samples. Um, there was various sizes that we weren't happy about. Ended up um, trying to get a new size chart made, and oh, well, because we did size chart ourselves, mm. so we adjusted a few things here and there. And so, what exactly did you adjust? Just like size around the waist, the sleeve width. Um, nothing, re nothing major. But they're um, little things that make all the difference. Exactly. Like there's nothing worse when the jumper like hugs you too hard around the waist. Exactly. Well, if, for example, these samples that we got, they were like dresses. Mm. Like they were huge around the waist. So, but those little things that we wanted to adjust made a massive difference to them. Like create, like actually making the product. So we, I think we spent like a week maybe even longer going backwards and forwards with them trying to sort out this sizing because they were saying that everything we were doing wasn't to proportion and whatever. In the end, they gave it – I made them give me a size chart that they would recommend like based off ours Yeah, and they changed one size. Which size? The bottom like waist on the biggest hoodie and that was it. <laughs> Did like was was that a deal breaker or it works still? It works works for us, but yeah, it's just not like we could have had the hoodies two weeks ago, mm. kind of thing. If like they it, if yeah. they had done what or, you wanted, yeah. But I guess that's a learning experience. Mm. Like that's the things that you have to figure out exactly. And like that, as you said, that's the risk you go when, like when you can't actually go over there and see mm. like what's been happening, like. And just trying to do all that over the phone with the time zone differences and Especially stuff. Especially over like, text. Oh, is that like you're literally trying to do yeah, it through like right. WhatsApp? Yeah. It's just, through, it's just through the app and it's just like it's just difficult. But like. And, and again, it's it's the language barrier. Yeah, dude, okay. Is like a massive, massive thing. Yeah, you're reading broken English like in yeah. response. So you're just like, yeah. oh, okay. Mm. You have to yeah, really you interpret have to, what like, they're saying. Yeah. Half the time you're guessing what they're saying and they send back, oh, no, this, is what, this isn't what we mean, like it's this. Mm. And you're like, oh, I took that the completely wrong way. But like, like you learn from it. And then from everything that I've seen so far, like the quality's good, mm. the looks are good, the colorways are good. Like it was hard work, but fuck, you and me both know it's like if we put in hard work, like only good things come out of it. Exactly right. Exactly right. And you were smart about how you dropped it too, like with the whole pre-order thing? Yeah, yeah. No, but that was still real smart because it gives you a good gauge on how well your stuff's going to go rather than importing like 200 hoodies and then you can only realistically sell like 50. Yeah, it's smart to a point. We kind of got found out a bit because, yeah, we kind of did it a bit backwards. But What do you mean? What happened? Because we, we did it. Whereas we pretty much asked people to pre-order like when the samples came out, but we didn't know that we were going to have all those complications with sizing and stuff. Oh, okay. 
So we got the samples, asked for pre-orders, whatever, just to gauge how many we needed. Mm -hmm. Thought we had the size incorrect, but then all that shit happened. True. So now people have been waiting like, I don't know, a month or longer, like. Opportunity to be like sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, sorry, I don't. Yeah, you can't say so. Oh, you can say sorry, but it is what it is. Like, mm. there's not much we can do. But I guess yeah. it's just a learning curve once again. Exactly. Like next time, it's like you wait, you make sure everything's perfect, then you're like, yeah. all right, get your pre-orders in now. This time, like, and you can have that guaranteed date. Yeah. But now we got now we got the size chart and everything sorted. So as long as these come and they're spot on, then. Oh, because okay. oh, you've got like, you've pretty much like, you've got the blueprints for it. Yeah. So then it's all easy from here. It's like, as long as you can communicate that to someone, like they'll make you what you need. No worries at all. Yeah. Interesting. Did yeah. you ever think about going locally? Yeah. But for us at the time, it was too expensive. Fair. Fair. And then like, you've got to spend your money on a lot of other things. Like you're paying heaps for paint for shoes. Like, yeah. And like, that's the thing with all three of us. We're all doing different stuff too. Mm. Jesse's got, um, he's trying to start up a vegan cafe. A vegan cafe? Yeah. In Geelong? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That should do all right. Peaceful. Peaceful, Cody? Yeah. Peaceful. And when's that opening? Uh, he's in the process of looking into all of it. They, okay. they were making like vegan food for people and stuff. Just like a home delivery kind of thing. I think people were picking it up, but yeah, similar. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure with all that stuff. But that's what his plans were. Alex was floating in out of uni and work and whatever, and I've been doing what I've been doing. True. And with like, when there's three of you, that's like that's a lot of people to try and manage to like <laughs> just to get anything done. 100%. That's the hardest part is meeting up like – Jesse's horrible with text messages. Alex is mostly working and I'm kind of just sitting there like. You've got your head in get? shoes. You're just like, yeah. you're like, I've done all the research. Yeah. Here I am painting yeah, my shoes. Yeah, you're yeah. like, yeah. what are we doing? We need people to respond so mm. we can make things happen. But yeah. So it's just, it is, it's a work in progress. Mm. And the more we actually do, the more we're going to, the more you'll grow. Yeah, exactly. No, and it's like, and you'll do real well too, man. Like in the small amount of time you've grown in doing your custom, like custom shoes and everything that you've learned from like with all the custom like clothes and stuff like that, mm. like you're figuring it out. Yeah, slowly but surely. And that's one of those things where people can like experience the road bumps that you've experienced and that's enough to stop them from like hustling at it. Mm. So that's when you know you really want it. Like you're just like, well, I guess you were forced into it. You had the pre-orders. So yeah, you're exactly. like, I need to fix this exactly. shit exactly. right now. That's that's the thing. That's where I was saying we fucked up was if we didn't have pre-orders, we could have delayed it to winter, like next mm. winter kind of thing. But it is what it is. It is and you've got to roll with the punches and shit happens. It, it does and it's like there's nothing you can do. Exactly. And the one positive like... Fuck, I've been saying, I've said it the past couple of episodes, but I'm going to be wearing a hoodie all summer. Mm. Like, I don't even care. So yeah. it's like when those penny race hoodies come, I'm like, I'm wearing a hoodie. Don't you worry about that. No, nah, it, it's Melbourne weather, like mm. Geelong weather, Victorian weather. Bro, it's even like we get all four seasons like in a day. It's yeah, fucked. Yeah, literally. Like it'll piss down, it'll dry. Like today. It'll get windy. Yeah, literally, exactly like today. And it's just a normal day for us. Yeah, it's another day. Another day in paradise. Fuck. But as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, bro, like that's all you can do. You just got to keep exactly. it up. Exactly right. You got to keep it up. I know you've got some stuff that you want to show in there. So show us. Right. Show us. A little bit of show and tell. Fuck it. Different kind of genius. There's no rules. And I love it how everyone got up and they're like, let's see what we got. All right. This is what have we got. So this is the first pair I ever, pretty much the first pair I ever customed. True. Show us them. Well, it is the first pair I ever custom. Um, that was, like I said, I went and bought. Um, I bought a pair offline, a pair of Jordan ones, because I didn't want to custom another pair. So. Fucking how old are these? 
Uh, probably coming up two years, I reckon. And you wear them a bit? Not heaps, but maybe once a month. But then, like, the wear, like, the quality control on them is real good. Like, it doesn't even, like, these look brand new. Mm. And I know you'd be looking after your shit as yeah, well. Yeah, 100%. Like, fuck. That's actually clean as. I'm surprised, like, NBA teams haven't hit you up yet and they're like, oi, <laughs> I want, like, a Celtics based yeah, shit. They've they got enough shit happening with all the shit in America. Uh, these are these Gatorades. These ones. These are beat. They're my personal pair, but. Bit beat. These ones are fire though. This light blue colorway. This was the first pair of shoes that you were wearing the first time. Oh no, you had the. It was blue here with the white insoles. Like you've got a pair that's. Oh yeah, the yeah, UNC yeah. ones. Yeah. But no, these blue Gatorades are sick. Oh, true. And it's the orange tips as well. Yeah. So that's they're the laces that come with the. With the shoes. Mm. Fuck. Gatorades. What do you think, Kip? mean i've got them true <laughs> i've got them in orange <laughs> well you gotta send me the video of you break dancing and i'll put that shit in there uh, i love how stacked your bag is as well you've got so much in there oh, there you go. Wait, they're not gonna that's, be big enough for that's me why, that's why i only bought one pair oh <laughs> uh, air forces that's i think that's that's the first air force i did too but What'd you do to the soul on those ones? Oh, that's died. That's just fuck me playing around with shit. True. That actually looks sick though. As it's weird more, as it is, it's like more it's of different. a permanent kind of solution to painting the soul. It's like you stomped an alien. Yeah, like that's, that's, <laughs> that's literally exactly what that looks like. And it's got the original badge in there as well. Mm. Fuck. Man, custom shoes. This shit's really special. It's really special. What have you got up? I just realized we're doing it on audio and people listening will be like, what the fuck are they yeah. doing? <laughs> Watch is, the video. This is a pair I'm working on. Just Louis Vuitton. Just True. Cause, just because. Why not? Everyone asks for Louis Vuitton. What's the thing inside it? What's that black That's thing? Just a shoe tree. It and just what? It just holds, holds its shape? Yeah, holds its shape. Does that make it easier to paint? Yeah. True. Mm. No, that's fucking clean. So what do you got? What's the plan for this? Are you gonna do that through like here? Yep. That's the plan. Fuck. And is this the same model? Do you use stencils on that as well? Stencils, yeah. True. It's fucking clean. And then got these two. These are a bit different. What do you mean they're a bit different? They're UV. UV? Yeah. So the UV reacted paint. So they turn. Oh. True? What magic is this? That's fucked. Jump off and do it in front of the camera. <laughs> That's actually fucked. That's so fucked. If that goes out in the sun, does it go purple? And what happens when it like cools down? Does it just go back to white? Back to white. Really? Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, solar paint. Solar paint. Yeah. Is that heaps more expensive? Uh, it's not too bad if you buy it a lot. It, oh, not so a it's lot. One of the things but, you buy in bulk again. Yeah. Man, that's actually oh, they're the per like the purple and yellow ones, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they go yellow, but with that with that light, that UV light, the yellow doesn't show up. True. It's only darker colours that show up. True. But if they were to go out in the sun, they'd turn like bright yellow. And then what happens when you get home at night? It'll just the colour goes, just back, goes to white. back to white. That's cool as fuck. So you've mm -hmm. literally got like two pairs of shoes. Yeah. Fuck. We need to do one. <laughs> Kiss face is just like, how do I do that? Bro, that's nuts. Mm. Have you had a few requests for them? Or that's your first pair? That's the first pair. Yeah. As soon as I actually haven't put anything like on my social media and stuff about it, mm -hmm. but I know as soon as I do, like I put a little snippets here and there up on my story and whatever. But and people, because that's game changing. The people at home, they'll be watching that on the camera. They'll be like, "Fuck, 
Well, it's just exactly what we all said. We just watched that happen and we're like, how do you do that with a pair of shoes? Like, that's mm. nuts. Shoes just like solar paint. I'm like, yeah, it's like, like we know what solar paint is. Yeah. It's like I didn't there, even know there was solar paint. There's not just that. There's like thermal paint, like cooling paint. And like, yeah. What's cooling paint do? It's like when water goes on, it changes a different color. No shit. Thermal paint, if heat, like put your hand on it, changes a different. It's like a bloody, what are they, the mood ring. True. Yeah. And like, so how did you even, like, where did you even begin to learn about that? Just looking at customizers. So a few other people that you've been following have been doing that. Yeah. That's nuts. Mm. That's (laughs) actually fucked up. It's fucking cool. The fact that you can wear a pair of shoes outside and it's just like plain white in your wardrobe. The minute you go outside, it turns purple and yellow. It's like, Mm. Jesus. That's sick. That's some shit to really be proud of. Yeah. Wait till till I post something and see what people think. But And you're like... Definitely make a little snippet of that. Yeah, no, I will. Once I, once uh, I think I'm giving them to her on next Saturday. So true. Is she a Geelong? No, nah, Melbourne. Oh, that's the one from Culture King. Kings. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Mm. That'll get you a lot of attention. Hopefully, everyone will be sitting in there. They're like, "Why are your shoes changing color?" You'll mm. be like, "Cause I'm the goat." Mm. <laughs> and it's like, "Where'd you go for a pair of them?" QS shoes. Yeah. Get at me, bro. That's sick. Yeah. So I guess what's next for this all? Like, you've got your shoes, you've got your clothing brand. Fuck. I've got a stencil machine on the way. So that'll, I won't have to outsource. So True. hopefully there'll be more of like those Louis, Vu- Louis Vuitton kind of. Designs? Yeah, hopefully. Um, a lot of people ask for them, but. I just don't have the time to out- outsource, so I thought, fuck it, I'll just buy my own. So that'll make you more self-sufficient? Yeah, pretty much. And, like, that's just a good idea because you don't have to wait for anyone else? Exactly. And then, like, not only that, like, you can have an idea, you can even just try it. And if the stencil comes out dope, you're like, oh, fuck it, I can yeah, paint this shit. exactly. I can just fuck around with my own stuff and the stickers and stuff, I can do myself also. So really? I just... That's what you want. Yeah, Remain just, self-sufficient. It's and the only way to yeah, be. There's heaps of other stuff you can do with them too. Like, What else can you do? This new machine, you can cut leather. So I'll be able to hopefully, if I can learn my sewing techniques, you can take the ticks off and replace them with something else. Or, oh, I see you. Mm. Wait, that's sneakers, jeans, tea. Tom, mm. you seeing this now? Yeah. Get at him. That's like, that's a man that can help you do all that because that's what he specializes in doing. And he's yeah. local as well. Mm. And it's like, I have a feeling he'll watch this one because he's a sneakerhead. Hopefully. He will, he will. Tom, you heard him. Get at him. Get at him. Now nah, that's sick. So I guess if people want to get at you, how do they do that? Uh, Instagram, Q Shoes, Facebook as well, Q Shoes. Um, mostly Instagram. Go to YouTube too, but <laughs> step my game up. True. Oh you, oh, you have been making YouTube videos, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I made a couple. Oh, and TikTok. We've been on yeah, that TikTok, TikTok train TikTok, together. The TikTok yeah, vibe. TikTok gang. Yeah, Kip Kong also in that Kip yeah. uh, TikTok gang. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's one of those things. you got to be on everything. You, Man, like we've had this conversation many a times. Like we've been trying to stay or do our best to try and stay ahead. Yeah. And we learned, the only way to do that is to be fucking everywhere. Exactly. Be relevant. Bro, on everything. And that's nah, sick. Fuck. Wait, but I guess we're at that time of the day. And I'm interested to see what you have to say, Q. Because I've, I've heard a bit about it as well. But what's one? Oh, what's the one thing you wish you were told as a youth? I've got a few things, but... What, probably just go out and do it. Don't be... Don't beat around the bush. I went through some... I have got stuck in a job for six years that I didn't necessarily like. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I had ideas of what I wanted to do, but didn't go and do it. Um, it's that. It's, it's not. It's it's pressure from people to. It's like that. Um, what's the fucking? It's kind of being stuck. Being persuaded by other people to do what like. Everyone says, go get a house, go get a car, do whatever. But 
I got stuck where with a car loan because I thought that's what everyone wanted. Like, interest. What do you mean you got stuck with a car loan? I went out and bought a. I I didn't buy it. I owed the bank. Like I went and got a loan for a car because that's what people kind of wanted. Not wanted you to do, but that's a. That helps a, your credit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I went and did. And, but now I look back and I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. I'm like, I'm still stuck with it. True. Yeah. And I guess like every year it just goes on and just get more and more interest. Mm. But it's one of those things, like, as you said, you got to go out and try it because otherwise yeah, you'll never exactly, know. Exactly. Exactly. But now looking back on it, I wish I didn't do it, but I've done it. So it, it is what it is. Mm. Um, and you got to try things too. That's where the just do it comes into it is I never had the balls to go out and do things. Shoe wise, work wise kind of thing. Um, and none of this stuff would have ever happened if I didn't have the balls to go out and do it or try it myself and be ballsy enough to try it on a $250 sneaker. Like, bro, but think about the rewards after you've mm. done that. Man, I'd be spewing if you never went out and tried that. I'd still be stuck with like shitty normal shoes. I'd yeah. be like, what do I do about them? I'd be stuck in the same way, spending hundreds, hundreds of dollars on shoes. Like, yeah. I'm still stuck there. But. So you said, but you said you had a few things. Was that all of them? <laughs> there's no rules, Q. It's all yeah, you. there's no rules. Uh, the other one is, which has played heavily on my mind the last, couple of years in particular is the people that were there with you from the start aren't always going to be there with you word and oh, i'm gonna get fucked for this uh numbers no, you're true yeah i got i had friends that were um like my close friends some shit happened and they're still my friends mm. but I've had friends that were also there at the time that are now my best friends. Mm. They're my brothers. And uh, you meet people along the way that, like, for you, for example, like, these boys, like, there becomes more friends than what you went to school with or who you grew up with. 100%. And then, like, that's part of, like, just growth. Mm. Like, if you always had the same people around you, like, would you really be out there trying new things all the time? Yeah. I wouldn't be where I am without... Like all these Bay City boys, like mm. everyone pushes everyone. We do. It keeps you on your toes. Yeah, you do some dumb shit. You fucking you know about it. Exactly. And I think it's important too. Like, and then what you just said—that's not a negative as well. Like, I think even I've had this conversation with you. If you know what you want to do as an individual, you're better off just acting on what you want to do. Mm. You're not cutting people off. You're not doing any of that. You're just doing whatever you need to do to achieve your goal. Yeah. And then that's all you can do with your life. Exactly. And when people fall off, like they don't fall off forever. It just means they're going in a different direction to life. You're going in a different direction to life. So just do it. Mm. And then the time will come where you will all come back together again. Exactly. And so it's like you can't even remain salty. You just, nah. you just, got to, oh, you just wish them all the best. Yeah, exactly. Like, you want to go out and do your seven. shit? Seven a million times, it is what it is. And like you can't change something that's already happened, so it's just like ride it out. It's life. It is. It really is, bro. No, but like, it's important as well because I think a lot of people get stuck in groups just because they want to make sure that there's still a group for them. Yeah, it's a social thing too. Mm. Mm. What do you mean by it's a social thing? You... Do you get stuck in a group because at the time it's fun, things things are fun, everyone's having fun, whatever, but there becomes a point where you kind of sometimes, or for, this is what happened to me, I was there doing the things but I knew that I wasn't having fun. I was just doing them because everyone else was. They're your boys. Mm. Mm. Whereas then, now I just do whatever I want, like. I'm not like you just do you. Yeah, exactly. And like we've had many conversations on a Saturday night at like one AM and you're like, What the fuck are you doing? I'm like <laughs> more editing. It's yeah. like what are you doing? Yeah. It's like working on shoes. Exactly. 
And it's like, man, and no one can stop you from doing that. Exactly. If that's what you want to do, bro, by all means, go and fucking do it. 100%. Because you make gold. Literally. Like, you've literally made gold. Like, you've done it for me. You've done it for Kip. You've done it for so many more people. It's like, I'm happy you sit at home all day customizing shoes and going out and getting on it with the boys. Like, yeah. it's much better. Exactly. It's better for my pockets too. Oh, 100%. 100%. So break that down. So if people want to come at you for a custom shoe job, how much does that cost them? It's not as, it expen- not as expensive as you think. Um, for me, customs start at 80 bucks. Um, what would 80 bucks get you just to break that down? Um, probably th- there would be no stencils. It would just be like maybe swoosh colored like paint the ticks or like for example on the air force paint the ticks or paint a couple of panels here and there um but yeah it goes upwards from there and what was like the max price be and what would the max price get you oh i i honestly don't know I, it'd be and this is what i tell people if people inquire and they say how much is this or how much would this shoe be? It all depends on how much work is like. Not not as if I'm to charge by hour, mm. but because if I was to charge by hour, it'd be fucking peanuts. Like it's how much effort I have to put into source stuff, source paint, source stencils. I don't source shoes. So don't ask me for shoes. True. Um, but yeah, like there's little bits and pieces that I add in, like the um, do raise the um, lace locks and stuff. Mm. Um, that comes at some times. Uh, depend depending depending on how like how intricate the shoe is, I'll add it in just because. Yeah, I see. You. If someone asks for it, and I have to source it, then. Yeah, it's like that's an extra 10 bucks. It's like yeah, whatever, I'll pay exactly. that just so it looks a little bit better. Exactly. And then at the same time too, man, like no one offers a service like yours. Like yeah, you can go get a custom through Nike and you get fucked. Like you like pay 300 bucks for just some nice little color changes on yeah. a very basic shoe. Yeah. So it's like you better bring him a pair and of shoes and he'll like do what he needs. It's like red, green, blue, yellow, pink. It's like the most basic of like, it's like a, color palettes. It's like just a normal, yeah, like you're... Average color palette. It's nuts. Right, so tell the people one more time how they will get at you if they want custom shoes. Instagram, Q Shoes, is the main source of where I do all my work from. Um, Facebook as well. If you hit me up, I'll, if you hit me up, I'll reply. Text me, call me, I don't care. Um, <laughs> Pull it, Jaren, says his yeah. phone number. It's just like, fuck. No, that's not happening. Um, but yeah, Instagram, Q shoes. That's pretty much it. That's dope. That's dope. And you do such a dope job too, bro. Like, thank you. You should be fucking proud. I'm proud. Now that I'm wearing these, I'm gonna be wearing them every episode. That's what I'm gonna be doing. All my shoes upstairs. I'm just like, no, nah, fuck him. Doesn't say different kind of genius. I don't want to borrow it. <laughs> no, it's proper. But Q, do you have anything else you want to tell the people? Go out and do it. Oath. And hit him up for custom shoes. Yeah. Stop wasting your time. Stop asking me. Fucking go directly yeah, to him. Exactly. Don't <laughs> have, be so don't much have, I'm not a scary person. Hit me up. He's not. He's not. But I think this is dope and I think that will show people as well. And after you pulled out your fucking show and tell of mystery shoes, people will be like, wow. Hopefully. Oh, they will. They will. But Q, I couldn't thank you anymore for coming, my brother. Ah, oh, thank you, bro. And I couldn't thank you anymore for these. It's no stress. Like, they're fresh out of the box. And they're fucking, honestly, the best pair of shoes I've ever put on. I think that's a bias because they're custom and tailored to me. Mm, Bung, exactly. fuck. That's yeah. exactly what I want. That's your shoe, bro. It's yeah, bro. Shoe. Like, no one else will have them. There's not, like, there's not even a pair of shoes that even comes close. Not yet. Not yet. Wait, don't make them more like these. Otherwise, I'll be coming for you. Coming for everyone. Nah. But Cody, you look like you got something to say. Ask him how many pairs of shoes he has. True. Q, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Last time I counted, 
Bye. 66 coming on tomorrow. <laughs> 66 pairs of shoes. Fuck. That, wait, how long have you been a sneakerhead? 2012, 2011. Oh, I've always liked sneakers, but since I pretty much started making a little bit of money. True. Yeah, the minute you have a bit of income to spend yeah. on shoes. And what made you want to become a sneakerhead? I just like shoes. I don't, it just happened. I, it honestly just happened. True. I knew of people that could get sneakers, so mm. put two and two together and bought myself a pair. Fucking no. Man, because like, like, that was one of the first things we said when we first met each other. And mine was, because I was such a big foot, mm. I always had to window shop. Yeah. So I'd just be looking at shoes and I'd be like, that's what I want. Mm. They're just not my size. <laughs> so I'm just looking at it, take a mental picture of it, and I'm just like, well, that's all that's, that's going to nice. happen. They're nice. Yeah. Now I'm like, all right, that's dope. Q. <laughs> yeah. I've got a white pair of shoes. Like, I need them to look like this. Yeah. And that, like, that's like, these shoes, for example, these are worth, well, to me, they were worth ever, like nothing. But mm. to buy this, this is a colorway that actually came out. I think they're worth like four grand, something like that. Fuck. Um, Fuck. I made these for like 200. True. That says a lot. Kids, stop selling drugs. Make custom shoes. Mm. <laughs> it's fucking heaps easier. Just, just buy and sell shoes, bro. That's what. Literally, the flipping. And it works so well as well. Bro. Why? What, what, what's so good about it? I know you do it. I don't do it. Oh, you don't do it? I don't buy and sell shoes. I don't, I'm not about that. But I know there's multiple people in the States, multiple kids, kids in the States that have become millionaires off reselling shoes. Mm. And how do you become a millionaire off reselling shoes? Buy them at retail, sell them at resale. Fucking hard math, isn't it? That's hard math. Mm. That's simple. That's something I wish that I wish I knew as a kid. Like, fuck. Yeah. If I knew that all I had to do was hold on to my shit, keep it in good condition, and in the future I can sell it for good money, would have collected everything. Yeah. There's this little kid. Oh, he's not a little kid. He's like 15. He's a kid. Three Point Kicks. He's from he's from Geelong. Three Point Kicks? Yeah. And what, he sells shoes all the time? He's a reseller. True. And he goes hard. Interesting. Yeah. Fuck. Well, there's a sneakerhead community in Geelong. That's yeah, me, you, slowly, him, and Tom. Yeah. And Cody. Yeah. And Kip. Yeah. It's coming. Cody George episode coming too soon as well. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Shit. He ducked from that one. He yeah. was just like, oh, no. Oh, no. Nah, but fuck. Kip. I mean, Q. Thank you so much. Nah, thank you, bro. Thank you so much once again for the shoes. Thank you so much for coming on and giving us a show and tell. Like, It's the first show and tell, I reckon. Bro. And it was like, and I don't think anyone can beat that show and tell. Unless you've got a pair of shoes that will fucking change colours when you shine a torch on them. Like your show and tell game better be fucking like reptiles or some shit. <laughs> like, it better be good. There'll be, there'll be more. There'll be more. All right. Any other questions in the background that people want to ask? No? <laughs> we sweet? Good. Q, good. got anything else to say? No, nah, I'm good, bro. Sweet. sweet. I'm good, thank you. Yo. How do you tie your shoes? <laughs> With a knot. What? Keep I'm, calm I'm, with his smug ass. I'm not taking my shoes off to lace them up. Lace yeah, bad. Them like bad. I'll put up a lace up video for you, bro. Yeah, TikTok, let's do it together. Yeah, all, all right, three done. of us. Yeah, let's, let's do a TikTok. <laughs> we all need TikTok. that attention. Lace up TikTok. Bad. But I guess that's it for another episode of Different Kind of Genius this week. Thank you all so much for listening. Like, comment, do all that shit. I know you guys love to do it. Q. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you, bro. Liam, you know what to do. Wrap that shit up for us. Wrap that shit up for us. And fuck. I'm going to show these off one more time. Hey. Oh, I see his fuck. <laughs>